What up, y'all? What up, y'all? You're tuned in to the best show on your airways right now. It's the Eminem Boys, straight to the point, with me, Mitchell. And I'm Millwood. We're in the house, y'all, along with Big Bro, AJ. What's going on, bro? Uh, not too much, man. How are y'all doing? How y'all doing? Hey, we hanging in there. What about you, Millwood? I'm doing great, man. Ready to start and ready to get this thing on. Man, a lot of things that we need to cover, a lot of stuff that's happened during the week. Uh, since we last talked and you know what uh the first thing you know that that's that's on my mind and you know i was down in new orleans for the new orleans atlanta falcons game and i'm gonna tell you new orleans was off the chain the shout outs to my people down in new orleans <laughs> bourbon street yeah that, that was a wild time i mean hey People are just crazy now. Shout out, shout out hey, to New Orleans. Hey, when I go to the NO, man, that, that city scares me, man. <laughs> I'm afraid of NO, man. I, I really am. Hey, man, they, hey, they, they showed your boys some love. It, it was nothing but love down there. You know, uh, hey, shout out to New Orleans Saints. They, they beat down the Falcons, you know. Uh, it was a close game. Just one yard was needed. I can't believe Falcons needed one yard but couldn't get the job done. You know, this is the second time that the Falcons played New Orleans and it was the, the game was determined on one yard. I believe it was uh, two years ago in the Dome where the Falcons had a fourth down and one and decided to go for it and didn't get it. And now again, here we are in the Superdome, four downs to get one yard and couldn't get in the end zone. So let me ask you this. Do you think it was, uh, do you think it was coaching? Uh, did they not call the right plays, or what did you see from from the television, from the, from the viewers' point of view? I I I don't, I don't think they called the right plays. Um, my 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 whole perception is, you're in the goal line, you do one running play. If your running back doesn't make it in, then you need to roll your quarterback out and get some more room so you have options. He can either run the football in, he can dump it. You just you need more options instead of. I think they they just ran the ball. Three, what two three times in a row and and he didn't even get a yard. I think he lost a yard on on the second on second down. He did. He did. So, do you think Michael Turner is the answer? Is it time to start looking for a replacement or the should Jacquez Rogers get more carries since he's Michael Turner's backup? Jacquez Rogers is too small. Uh, they're doing they're they're working fine with the running game. Uh, Michael Turner. I don't think he's going to last that much longer. I think they need to start looking for a more of a um, durable back. Uh, they need a breakaway back. Uh, Michael Turner hasn't ran uh, 50 yards in, what, three, four years. Um, he's good in the in the fourth quarter, when especially when the Falcons are down, when the, when the Falcons are up, I'm sorry, and, and they need to run the clock out. But they need a game breaker, a, a running back that's going to bust through the line and, and give them 60 yards off that run. I've seen many holes. That Michael Turner uh, got through, and he's only gained 15, 16, 20 yards. When, when if you had a, a game, a game burner, a speedster, it would have been a touchdown. So, with that being said, the Falcons are still eight and one. They're in first place. Um, uh, I would say they're that they're one of the biggest surprises in the NFL. But let me ask you this: What team is your biggest surprise right now? Uh, since we're at the midway point of the NFL season, what team would you deem? Would, would, that you would say has uh, surprised you the most right now? Well, I know we were supposed to pick one, but I was kind of like tied up with two. Uh, don't I, be and, a and, habitual and, uh, <laughs> fish traveler here. I, I picked the Seattle Seahawks and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, the reason why I picked Seattle, they, they came out with a, a rookie quarterback. Okay. They paid uh, – $20 million to sign Flynn from Green Bay, and he's sitting on the bench, and they go with a rookie quarterback. And and to be honest with you, this kid is good. He's he, he is real good. And so they're 5-0 at home, which is which is very important to win your games at home. They need to do better at on, on, on the road, however, because they're 0-3 they're in the division. They're 1-4 on the road. They, they need to get at least another win or two on the road. And I believe they have a big game coming up um, this week. Uh, I can't remember who they're playing, but they need to definitely get some road wins going because that's they're um, losing on their confidence. They had a close game in Arizona the first part of the week. Uh, but the key is that they're winning at home, 
And so it's very difficult to go to Seattle right now and win in Seattle. Well, I, the way I look at it is that how surprising can they be when last year they went 7-9 and nine and they were a team that was picked to be on the rise? And let's be honest with you, uh, they've been very fortunate in some of their wins that they have this year. Of course, we all know about the travesty that happened Monday night with Green Bay where the referees just totally screwed Green Bay. I mean, that was just awful. I don't know how in the world uh, Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder could have seen and made that call right there, to be honest with you. So, with that being said... If you look at the replays, if you look at the replays, there was a tie for the catch. Look at the replays. There was not a tie for the catch because the receiver did not have control of the ball. But anyway, so we digress. One hand anyway, we catch. digress. It, it, You know what? They still won the game. But like I said, <laughs> there was they were 7-9 coming in last year and coming into the season with the things that Pete Carroll had done with that particular team, we know that they were one of the teams that was on the rise. We expected them to be good this year. It's not like we expected them to fall back and, and to the dregs of the rest of the leagues like a Jacksonville or a Cleveland. We knew that they had talent. And on top of that, they brought in Matt Flynn. Um, the, the surprising thing, like you said, was bringing in uh, Russell Wilson. And he's been, I won't say he's been great. He's been a good game manager. Uh, the defense has been lights out. That, that's, to me, has been the biggest surprise. But for me, uh, my biggest surprise team in the NFL right now, it would have to be unquestionably the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, no one, and I mean no one, picked them to be 6-3 and three right now. I agree with you. Uh, if, if you take a look at what they've done, and not only that, without their head coach, Chuck Pagano, uh, shots out to him. You know, he's, he's battling for his life right now with leukemia. You know, shots out to Chuck. Hey, Chuck Strong, as, as they like to say, up in Naptown, Indianapolis. You know, hey, they, they are 6-3, and three, and you've seen a revitalization of that particular team. Everybody thought that once Peyton Manning left Indianapolis, that they were headed nowhere. They virtually purged their roster of all veterans, got rid of all the high-priced players, and they are 6-3. and three. Okay, who did they get rid of? Their defense is still intact. Their front four is still intact. Yep, they still they have, a, they have a They have a future Hall of Fame wide receiver. So, Luck had someone to throw the ball to. He had one. He has one wide receiver in Reggie Wayne, and and you look at what Reggie Wayne did last year. He was coming off a disappointing season last year, and you take Andrew Luck and what he has done with that particular offense with that team. You know, take a look at the stats. Reggie Wayne leads the NFL in receptions this year, and this was supposed to be a guy who was on the downside of his career. Reggie Wayne has sixty nine receptions this year. And is second in the league in receiving yards with 931 receiving yards. We're talking about a team that went 2-14 and 14 last year. A team that we questioned whether or not if they were going to actually win a game. Okay, here's the question. The way that the Colts are playing now with the players that they have. And you said that they disbanded the team and got rid of all the veterans from last year. And they went 2-14 and 14 last year. They're six and four now. Do you think that the Colts deliberately lost their games last year to get Andrew Luck? A part of it, part of me says yes, they did. But also, this is the NFL, and they just simply didn't have the talent. I mean, you went out and they went and got Kerry Collins, who's about ninety years old, and there just did, did not cut the must. I mean. They were a team that was just lifeless because we know that Peyton Manning made that team goes around. You take a look at what Peyton Manning has done in Denver. He has totally revitalized that franchise. They, he has made them significant despite what Tim Tebow did last year. And I give Tim Tebow credit, but they're doing it in the more traditional means. And you look at what they what the Colts did last year and based off that 2-14 and 14 record. And right now they're sitting at 6-3. and three. They have the same record as the New England Patriots. So are you telling me that they have just as good as talent as New England? No, no, no. I, I, I think that the Colts lost their games last year on purpose so they can get Andrew Luck. I don't I believe that they did not want to pay Peyton Manning the money that they were that they were gonna owe him. And so they took a chance. They like, okay, we have two prospects coming out in the draft, Andrew Luck and 
my man from the Washington Redskins. And so they were like, hey, we can take Luck in the, in the draft or RG3, and we, and we can start fresh again. And, and that's what I think they're doing because if you, look at, if you look at the team this year compared to last year, I don't see any significant difference. I really don't see any significant difference. Now, yeah, we have a new, a new coach, um, a new system going in, but I think that I think that something's fishy about this whole Indianapolis thing and Andrew Luck. Well, I, I think that speaks to the credibility of what Andrew Luck, uh, Chuck Pagano, uh, the, the offensive coordinator, the, the head coach, the temporary head coach, and Bruce Arians. I think that speaks volumes to what they have done with their franchise. I mean, to turn that franchise around and less than a year it's just simply amazing i mean you just don't make those turnarounds in the nfl these days and they were just god awful on both sides of the ball and so you have to give credit to the coaching staff regardless if they tank games or if they didn't tank games on purpose or or they did not do it on purpose the end result is that they're sitting six and three. And guess what? They won't be the first team or the last team to take games to get a number one draft pick. I'm sorry, my friend. A winner is a winner. When you now, see one, you have to uh, go out and get it. Do you, do you not think it have anything to do with the schedule that they played? I mean, you go back. I mean, look at the schedule that they played. They, you know, Chicago, Minnesota, Jacksonville. And their division is weak. Green Bay, um, New York, the Jets. I mean, Cleveland. I mean, they, they haven't had the toughest schedule now. No, they haven't had the toughest schedule, but you still have to play the game. You still have to go out there and play the game. And let's be honest. I mean, any time an NFL team looked at it and said, hey, we got the Indianapolis Colts on our schedule, you automatically pencil that in as a win. So I think you have to give credit to the organization. Also, you have to give credit to the team because they have totally turned that team around. They, they have built a winner, and they're on the right road to building a winner and a perennially playoff team. Now look at the schedule they have. Okay, they played against Chicago the first week one. They lost. They beat Minnesota. I mean, Minnesota struggled in the beginning of the season. So I mean, you no, have that's, to- that's Minnesota's only loss. Well, not only loss, but one of one of uh, three losses they had in the beginning of the season. So I mean, Minnesota struggled. So I mean, they haven't had the toughest schedule. So I mean, I wouldn't, you know. I wouldn't break out the champagne just yet. No, we're not going to break out the champagne just yet because it's only the midway point through the season. So, you know, there's still uh, half of a season left to be played. But right now, I mean, like I said, this team was 2-14. and 14. And if you take a look at some of the losses uh, that they have, the only bad loss that they have on their schedule is Jacksonville. Uh, Chicago is in first place in their division. They're sitting at 7-2. and two. Minnesota is in second in third place in their division. They're at six and four. Um, they beat uh, Green Bay, and let's be honest. I mean, how many teams are really going to beat Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, and that machine that they have? So I, I would say you can only play the teams that's on your schedule. And while it hasn't been a a really tough schedule, but then again, it hasn't been a cakewalk either. And you still have to play. The teams that are on your schedule. Well, let's look. Let's look at their next. Let's, let's look at their schedule for the upcoming next eight games. They have New England, the Houston Texans twice, and I would say Tennessee. So that Tennessee is weak. Ten and Tennessee. No, is, Tennessee is three and six. It. Don't count. Don't. don't how can, how you have to understand. Tennessee lost their quarterback. Their quarterback's coming. Tennessee back now, is and they won three last week. and six. Are okay. you out of your All mind? Right. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then then we must give. Well, we should give credit to the Colts because they played a three and six New York Jets team and they lost. So it, I'm you, not, so you're telling me a three and six team is a good team? No, I'm not saying it's a good team. I'm saying I think those are the games that they're gonna. Well, we'll see. I mean, I'm sure folks thought that they were going to lose to Green Bay, but they won. They won that game at home. But like you said, they we still will, may finish eight and eight. We, we will find out about this team coming up. Like you said, they have two games against Houston, and uh, against New and the next game coming up, we're going to find out what they're really made of at New England, going against New England. You know, so we'll we'll find out. Particularly, and, what this team is made of, and are are, are they ready right now? So now, all I have to say is, remember this one. It's, it's, it's a it's a team out there. I want you to I want you to go back into your into the past, 
and I want you to remember this team, and this is what the Indianapolis coach remind me of. The Cleveland Cavaliers when they drafted LeBron James. The year before they drafted LeBron James. That's all I have to say on that note. My friend, that is a bad analogy. You're comparing apples and oranges. Really? Did you really go there? Did not Cleveland lose all their games so they can draft LeBron James? They yeah. did, and actually, did at- Indianapolis lose all their games so they can draft? And you know what? I, t- I, I, I take yes. that back because guess what? The end result was that they were able to get to the playoffs, and they consistently won fifty to sixty games each year. So if you're telling me the Colts are going to win ten to thirteen games a year with I'm Andrew not Luck, I'm not saying I'll that. tank every game I'm not that there is. That. I would tank it. So you know, at the end of the day. I still think that the Colts have been one of the most surprising teams, and and they're bound to make a playoff run. Okay, well, when we get back, we're going to talk about my team, and uh, we'll see how you think about that. Coming up. Sounds good. You turned in the straight to the point with Mitchell and Millwood. We'll be right back. <laughs> 